Linda, it's uh, been a few weeks since the Women's World Cup. Um, just can you give us your emotions, thoughts, feelings for the last three or four months? Because winning the league at, at the end of the our season and then going on to play the World Cup, can you describe the whirlwind of emotions? Uh, before I get into the World Cup things, uh, I will start with the league. When we played against the Rangers, our very last game before the league ends, and it was a deciding game. It was really tough. We played away and the atmosphere was just amazing and they had more supporters than us um, it was a tough game but uh, we went there we were mentally prepared we were ready for the game and at the end of the of the game we showed character and we got the three points that we needed and getting into the world cup with that it's a confidence booster you know and going back home and making sure that i get selected for the world cup it was not easy because we have so many talented players in South Africa, but I kept on working hard and getting into the 23 squad that made it to the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to look at kind of your journey to the World Cup as, as yourself and as, as the staff and squad, because um, you're the first player from Glasgow City that reached the knockout stages. Is it fair to say that this kind of journey started kind of looking back to the African Cup of Nations probably in 2018, you know, started really making that headway reach the final, losing the final, would that be a fair assessment to say that was where kind of really this, this trajectory kind of started? Yeah, definitely. It was a build-up for us uh, back in 2018. I mean, the players that have played uh, for the national team uh, for the World Cup this year, most of them, uh, they were so young back in 2018. I'm one you of them. Coded. Yes, I'm one of them. So it was, it was a build-up. It was a build-up. And, you know, we played Nigeria. I remember the final. It was a very tough game. And we came short. Uh, we lost in the penalties. But uh, we never gave up. And, yeah, 2023 was a year for us. Yeah, absolutely. And just... With that, I, how much fuel did that have in you know, your stomach, all the players' stomach, to really go on and try and do one better when the tournament came around again? I think with the Afcons that we've played, we've always like done our best, but we'll come up short, you know. So that we knew that we have uh, capabilities of winning the, the, the tournament. So in 2023, when it came, 2022 basically, when it came, we made sure that this is a year we need to make it count. And like you said, we've been building up, we've been, and the team is so good. We like a family more than players, you know, so yeah. How difficult was it as a player, you know, as a club player at the time when you were, you were in Finland and then you were trying to play international football as well, but there are a lot of stops and starts with the, the kind of COVID period. How, how difficult was it, particularly international, to kind of keep everyone together from the various parts of the world and, and locally? get these games together, keep the momentum going that you are picking up from 2018? I mean, when the COVID happened, I mean, it was a stop for, for the whole world. It was very difficult, yeah. but I think uh, a coach, uh, a national coach, what she did was just to keep in contact with us all the time and just making sure that in our teams that we are preparing very well for when she calls up uh, us to the national team, it's, it's easier for her to basically see where we are as players. Let's look at 22 then, 23, the, the AFCON this time around. It was in the mindset, you're in the final, progression was there. Now, kind of looking at the chance to try to go deep in the tournament. Um, obviously, qualifiers as part of his World Cup, did you kind of have to think about that in the back of the mind or was it just focus on the tournament and whatever happens, happens? I think just before we even went to the tournament, uh, our mentality, we were, we were so prepared for everything, you know, and we said, I remember, the standard that we said was we are winning this we've always come short so we are definitely winning this you know and we didn't even look for like second best or whatever we wanted to go all out so yeah big change in mindset from when you were saying that it was about doing our best to try and get as far as you can to now you're in the mindset you can go and win this yeah talk about the final 50,000 fans in Rabat sum up what, kind of what that atmosphere was like the, the occasion I uh, remember entering the, 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 the field before before we did our warm up, we just walk around the field just to fill the pitch, you know. I remember when we got there, there were so many fans and I remember us just singing, you know. And I think that brings like the unity in us, you know, and taking away the nervousness, you know. So it was, it was, the atmosphere was amazing. 
but so was our unity and we showed character as well. What was with, with the fact that winning that, did it kind of take on a new level in terms of you know, the falling that the team got back in South Africa, maybe from before the, the World Cup? Because there's players, you know, Jeannie Van Vyke's been here, you know, mm -hmm. players like that, you know, that have got a big falling, but did for, for that yourself, the falling Richter scale up? I mean, winning the AFCON uh, really did change uh, how people looked at women's football in South Africa. Uh, first of all, a lot of people are now interested in, in women's football. I think the only thing that can like really impact it's us getting the sponsors. That's something that is lacking at the moment. But I feel like if we can get more sponsors, that would be. You personally have got a, a fantastic following on social media. You must be, you know, humbled by the kind of the support that you get and, and everything you know you do at the club and, and with the country as well. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm relatable like that because I love dancing and that's like our culture in South Africa and I love interacting with people in a way. So yeah. And you've got your dancing as well as everything else about you to, to Glasgow. Um, obviously around the time winning the AFCON and then building up to a World Cup, you you, you come to Glasgow City. Um, how difficult was the kind of, you obviously had experience playing in Europe, but how difficult was it to come across here? We talked about you at the time when you signed, but kind of the transition to a new club while obviously competing for a place at the, at the World Cup. I mean, uh, getting into the team very late, I mean, I missed pre-season. You know, I missed mm -hmm. prison and it was it was really hard for me to, to really get into the team. It took me months to actually, you know, understand the style of play, understand the coaches and understand the players. But when I got it, I, I, I never looked back and the coaches and the players made it easier for me because they were communicating with me and they were helping me very much. You touched on it at the very start about the, the game against Rangers winning the title. Um, how many times have you watched the assists that you provided the lead up to the goal? Actually, my dad always reminds me of that video. He He's the one who has that video all the time. And be like, how did you do that? And it was like, it was an instinct thing just to make that run. And I remember uh, it was Aoife actually saying, there's Lauren, Lauren is free. Because I was even thinking of shooting, but my angle was not that great. And it was like, there's Lauren on the other side. And I gave it to Lauren and Lauren did the most. I was going to say, I remember that there's some footage of you on the pits going, you're kind of getting ready to shoot yeah, you know, yeah, when we go yeah. for that near post. I wanted to shoot actually, but like... I thought she missed. Yeah, you, don't need it. You, you do what you do. You do what you do. I'm, I guess you must be glad that you heard Eva. There was a lot of people on the bench as well that were uh, shouting to, to pass it. You must, you must be able to delay because it says, you can score goals but assists and particularly for that kind of assist one of the best you'll ever get you'll get I guess yeah I mean and it was noisy in the stadium but for me to hear if it was very important and for me to make that decision because we are here because of what happened during that moment yeah so you come off the back of that win the the SWPL title called up for the the World Cup and obviously there were some issues off the pitch but Kind of how was it easy for you to kind of, or was it was it easy for you to kind of just forget about the kind of stuff going on, and then football and sense to get ready and prepare for the World Cup? I mean, it was not easy for me to just forget of what happened. I mean, of the field, but I think we came together as players and we fought as as players. We were united, and what was nice is that at the end we had uh, an agreement with with the players and the association. So before heading even to New Zealand. Everything was just settled, so yeah. Traveling to um, New Zealand for your your base for the for the group stages. Um, before getting to the actual games, what was the kind of buzz and atmosphere like? Was there a real excitement in the kind of areas you were playing, locals and and, and people really wanting to take in the matches? Yeah, everywhere we went, like there was it, the World Cup was hyped up. You know, it was it was amazing to see and. There was a lot of South Africans in New Zealand, so that was that was a, a confidence booster, and it was really nice to see. Going into the, the kind of first games, kind of go through the games. Was there kind of a, a target, you know, let's go to the group stage, or, or kind of was it take one game at a time? What was the kind of the mindset going into it? I mean, yeah, uh, the main target for us was to get out of the group stage and make it to the round of 16 because uh, back in 2019, we were there for the first time in the World Cup and we've learned, we had the experience. So the only thing was to improve and get to the next stage. Sweden always been a, a top team over the, uh, down the years. 
went on to have a, a decent tournament themselves. Um, maybe could have won it in some people's eyes. Um, but that first game, you know, in the game for so long, competing so long, and you kind of get that harsh reality in, in, in stoppage time. Just kind of talk through that kind of opening game, the occasion, and kind of ultimately the disappointment. I mean, I have to give credit to, to our analysts. You know, they, 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 they did a great job. We were so prepared for that game. We knew what, what was their strength and we also knew what was their weaknesses. So getting into that game, mentally we were, we were prepared and physically we were prepared. And I think it was just unfortunate for us that we got to concede at a later stage. But I also agree with some people that thought that we could have won that game. How, with a quick turnaround, kind of three, four day turnaround in terms of games, how easy is it to get to kind of that disappointment kind of out of the way onto the next game? I mean, uh, it's important for us, knowing it's a tournament, anything can happen and no matter the results, we have to take them and make the most into our next game. Did you feel the pressure because that second game, before we get into the actual game, it's kind of that way with the state of getting through the group? kind of at least need to pick up a point? I mean, for sure, the pressure was there, but what we knew was that, like, this is football, anything can happen. And as much as they prepared uh, Italy or Italy, we also prepared for them, you know, Argentina, yeah. Yeah, so Argentina, um, fantastic kind of, you know, first half particularly, going up, then you obviously score. Um, and we had that kind of two or three minute wait to see if it was uh, onside. Did you did you think you were onside and it was pretty clear cut, or were you unaware of what was happening around you? Because it was one of those when you seen it first thing, you thought, "Well, that's miles offside." I mean, there's a saying that says, uh, "Play according to the whistle," you know. And and at that moment, that's what I did, you know. And when they said it was offside, I was like, "Okay, that can be possible." But when it was returned, I was I was so emotional and I was very happy that I get to score my first ever World Cup. Yeah, and you could you could see the, the emotion. It was like yeah. almost like you, you couldn't do a dance because yeah, you were yeah. just normally, so you yeah. couldn't believe it. Because normally I dance, I do those things, mm. but at that moment it was just tears of joy. Yeah, and that will never be taken away now. It will never be taken away. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from that kind of high and a personal one, something amazing again. There must be a feeling of well, two 0 up, and that way, the way the game went, finished two all, still in the tournament at this stage, but. Did you kind of feel like afterwards in the change room you kind of thrown that one away a little bit that you should have you picked up the three points? I mean, just before getting into that, I think we started so strong mm -hmm. that we wanted to kill the game early uh, in the first half. But as as time went, I think our energy levels went down, you know, and the changes were meant to be made, you know. So and I think that uh, changed the game. The game, but uh, what can we say, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it went on to the last group game anyway, and you kind of and that and we and you knew that you know a positive result would likely be enough, and you had the heartbreak of match day one, you know, with a late goal, very very entertaining game, the match day three, and this time the rewards of of a stoppage time winner. Um, I mean, you, you were part of the, the the group in the corner celebrating, just the emotions of that from feeling of conceding a goal to lose a game to scoring to effectively take you through? I mean, I think against Argentina, the 2-2, it was a blessing in disguise, you know, because after the, the game, we were not so happy. We, we were angry at ourselves because we could have won that game. So that gave us the, the motivation. That was a motivation enough for us to say, OK, when we get to Italy, like, it's a do or die match. We have to win this game and we will win this game no matter what happens. And as, as time went, and when I looked at the time, I think there was two minutes left and it was 2-2. Two, two. I'm like, God, do something, you know, do something. And uh, we got a third goal and uh, for me, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. And a bit of personal deja vu with the, the Rangers game at Irock exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. Reminded me of that game, actually. Getting plenty of experience at these late, late winners. So with that objective kind of complete in terms of getting through to the last 16, um, so always a tough game. Netherlands, you know, have been striving and, and coming forward. Obviously, previous finalists, um, but there was large stages of that game that you guys were, were kind of in the game. I mean, I'm sure as the game went on and, and, if, and full time reflections, 
proud of the campaign and stuff. It was a still a little niggle of like oh, we might have maybe nicked the extra time and, and had a chance. I mean, uh, all I think all the games that we played, we we showed character. We really showed character, and we knew getting into Netherlands, they're very physical and they're good on the ball. And again, the planning was good for us. And there were times where we we had chances, we played chances, we just couldn't convert. And once they get one chance, two chances, they they score. And I think that is, that is the difference between us and them, just getting those chances and finishing them off. Kind of in the kind of hours, days, maybe weeks now afterwards, what kind of, what, I guess, reception back home and, and thoughts um, kind of from the squad on, on an overall? Cause I know you went back after the World Cup to, to go home as well. I mean, the reception back at home, it was, it was, but we, we went in different planes, mm. but it was, it was amazing. And you know, when a five year old saying, I also want to play soccer, I want to be like Linda, it's, it's, it's motivating, you know, and it shows that, like, game that women's football is really growing and it's nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. And what's going to targets now? Let, let's, let's talk South Africa first. Targets now, because you, I've gone champions last 16. Is there more to come from, from this team and yourself personally? There's definitely more to come from this team. Uh, we've got a really, really good squad and we've got uh, Olympic qualifiers coming and that's a goal to, to make it to the Olympics and go show our talents there. And uh, obviously um, AFCON is coming again and it's not going to be easy because, you know, once you've won the world, uh, AFCON, you know, teams, when they play against you, they'll go all out so it's just for us to win it again and with with the internationals you need to also perform at club level as well what's kind of thoughts and ambitions for for this uh, for this this kind of season we're in the early stages with club city my ambitions for 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 uh the team this season and for myself is to like uh, we qualified for the champions league so it's to get to the next stage and uh, obviously win the league again yeah yeah Great goals to have, Linda. It's been great following you over the summer and uh, best luck for the rest of the season. Thank you so much.